3.5 out of star in the little, little hot corner. Oh, It's Jay and today I'm here with my December wrap-up. This is going to be part one of two because I read a total of 13 books and knowing me I ramble a lot so the video will be 20 minutes long if I do all 13 books. So this is going to be the first six books that I read this December. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I read is called Looker and this is by Laura Sims. I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It follows a woman who is going through a divorce after a lot of failed attempts at childbearing and that's when she becomes obsessed with her next door neighbor who is a famous actress. I honestly am not 100% sure how I feel about this book. It's advertised as a mystery thriller but I definitely think that that is not right. I was waiting for this huge plot twist to happen and it just felt like literally nothing was happening in the book. It was just this woman who remains nameless the entire time just stalking her neighbor and that was basically it for the entire book but nothing happened so I was kind of disappointed in it. The ending was really anticlimactic in my opinion so I just was expecting more from it and definitely disappointed. The next book I have is The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Alice and her mother Ella who have been running from the bad luck that has been following them for the past 17 years. One day Alice's mother goes missing. The only clue of where she may be is a page out of her grandmother's book called The Tales of the Hinterland and a note from her mother saying to stay away from the hazel wood. So in order to find her mother she needs to pair up with Elroy Finch who is a big fan of her grandmother's work and try to find her mother before it's too late. Honestly, I think that this book was just so overhyped that my expectations were so ridiculously high for it that it fell very short for me. Throughout the entire book, I was honestly just kind of bored and I didn't really care about any of the characters or what happened to them. I didn't particularly like Alice very much. I found her to be very self-centered and rude. Elroy Finch was average to me. He wasn't anything memorable and I didn't really care about what happened to him either. I think that the ending was very rushed. It was very anticlimactic. I wanted more from it. So overall, it just wasn't for me, but I definitely see why a lot of people love it. So I wouldn't say don't check it out if you're interested because a lot of people do enjoy it. The next book I have is Fairest by Gail Carson Levine and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Aza who as a baby was left in one of the rooms of a local inn where she is found by the innkeeper and his wife who decide to raise her as their own. She's a little bit different from the rest of the girls. She's considered to be very ugly but as she grows older she develops a beautiful singing voice which catches the attention of many people in the village. One day a duchess arrives at the inn and she finds herself in need of a companion for the king's upcoming wedding. After spending a little bit of time with Azza she decides that this is the companion that she is choosing so they go off to court and when they're at court she meets the new Queen Ivy and her entire life changes when Ivy decides that she is going to be the next lady in waiting. I listened to this on audiobook which is a full cast audio which I think definitely changed my experience. I don't think I would have liked it if I had read it just as a physical copy. There's a lot of singing in the book which the audio cast did the entire, you know, ensemble and I think that if I had read it definitely would not have liked it as much. I think it was a great addition to the story having it on audio. This is apparently a retelling of Snow White but I think it is very loosely based. I really enjoyed Azza as a main character except her preoccupation with beauty was kind of annoying at times which is not a very good thing since you know it was the whole point of the story. I also didn't really like Prince Ajori because there was just such an insta-love which made no sense to me because apparently she is so hideous, so why does he love her so much? Also, he turned on her really quickly out of nowhere, which was weird since he was apparently so in love with her, so like, mm, did not enjoy that part of the book. I did like the overall message about beauty being within instead of on the outside and I think that the way that the story was told and the message was brought across very enjoyably, that's not a word but whatever, and fun. Definitely think it's more like a middle grade book but 
still super cute. The next book I have is Enchantment by Orson Scott Card and I did not enjoy this book. I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars because the second half was a lot better than the first half but this follows a Russian scholar named Ivan who moves to America when he is a young boy and then he decides that he is going to go back to Russia in order to work on his thesis and when there he stumbles across a meadow that is magical and a beautiful sleep sleeping woman is on a rock pedestal guarded by a bear. After kissing the princess awake, he gets transported back thousands of years and finds himself in a mythical land with an evil witch named Baba Yaga who does everything in her power in order to stop their happily ever after. Honestly, this book was just very boring for the first 300 pages. It's like 600 pages or something like that, but I was just not having a good time reading it the only two characters I actually cared about were Baba Yaga and Bear who had like five chapters in the entire book that were like three pages long so I was definitely disappointed. My mom recommended this to me. She said that it was a wonderful story but disagree. I also didn't like how religious the book is because I'm not personally religious. I just was bored the entire time. I also found all the characters except Baba Yaga and Bear to be very bland and boring. So overall story not for me but what you're gonna do. Sometimes you don't read some great books and that's one of them. So the next book I have, I love so very much. It is the second book in the Raven Cycle. It's called The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater. I'm not gonna give a synopsis since it is the second book in a series, but I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. I loved it. I don't know what it is about the Raven Boys and this story, but it just draws you in right from the first page and you need to keep reading to find out what's gonna happen next. I loved that this was focused more on Rowan and we got to know more about him and why he is the way he is. I think that the whole concept of taking things from your dreams is like so cool but also so terrifying at the same time. I just love these boys and I'm super excited to get to the third book which my brother gave me for Christmas so definitely going to be getting to that ASAP but I just love these boys and I love blue and I can't wait for the next book. The final book that I will be talking about in part one of this wrap up is Everless by Sarah Holland. This takes place in the land of Sempera which uses time as a form of currency and you can take time from other people and bring it onto your own lifespan by using blood irons. The aristocratic families tax those who are less fortunate than them and basically become immortal while leaving everybody else to beg for their lives. After a tragic accident, Jules Embers and her father are forced to leave the girling estate and go on the run. And that's when her father becomes ill and she quickly realizes that she needs to return to the girling estate in order to try to earn enough time in order to save her father before it's too late. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I initially found it to be very slow and I didn't think I was going to enjoy it very much but I ended up really getting invested in the story and the characters. I wanted to know what was going to happen next. I liked the world building and how everything was explained in a way that wasn't info dumpy. It let the story progress but you still got all the information you needed to understand what was going on. I loved learning about the sorceress and the alchemist and why they were battling each other. I don't know how I feel about Jules yet. She kind of pissed me off but then at times I still really liked her. It kind of felt like she was in the story to help things progress but some of the actions and like choices she made were literally just for the story to progress and it didn't make sense with her character and how she acted before if that makes sense. How many times can I say sense in one sentence? Ha, <laughs> sense. Sentence. Eh. I really liked the female friendship between Jules, Ina, and Caro. I thought it was really well done. I also really enjoyed Liam and how his character developed throughout the story. Also loved there was no insta-love because we all know one of my biggest pet peeves but it was very nice in this book that it wasn't there. I also think that Jules' childhood crush on the prince, I forget his name, it's like Ronin or something like that, Ro, Ron, I don't know. That's how memorable he was. I thought that that was really dumb because it's been like years past and she still has this childhood crush after not seeing him for that long. Mm, false. I do not think that's true. But overall, it was a fun story and 
I don't know if I'm going to go out of my way to find the sequel, but if I do find a copy of it, I'll definitely pick it up because I want to know what happens next. Alright guys, so that was the first six books that I read in the month of December. I will have my part two up for Wednesday probably, so stay tuned for that. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!